Jira is certainly not the first, nor is it the only project management software or even scrum management software. But one thing that really sets Jira apart is the ability to query data that we have stored in Jira. And we'll see that this is very popular and can automate a lot of our common tasks. Uh, now, I mentioned that there are other project management and scrum management software out there. At the time of this recording, I'd say Jira is uh, pretty much in the front. You tend to see a lot of companies and a lot of organizations that use Jira. And with this cloud-based offering now, it's even available for small projects of 10 or less for free at the time of this recording, uh, and for larger projects for a fee, but nonetheless very easy to set up and very easy to administer. Now, what is JQL? It's a way that we can query all of our project data, which is really neat. It kind of gives us a little techno edge to project management where we have this repository with all of our tickets. And by writing some handy JQL, we can get really good and up-to-date information about how our project is going. And if needed, we can take some correction steps to get the project back on track. Let's take a deep dive look. Note that there are a couple ways we can create JQL, um, or at least get inspiration for JQL. One is, notice when we go to the advanced search, it, it gives us a little sample here. It says, okay, created greater than or equal to minus 30D. What does that mean? Created within the last 30 days. So negative uh, 30D means negative 30 days. So created within it, within then. And then order, uh, descending order. That's one way we can do it. We can also go back and forth with this basic view. And we can look at things like... Uh, what it generates for us. So assigned to Brandon Jones, we know there are four items. Uh, switch to JQL, and it gives me kind of a goofy assignee. Uh, but notice that it has taken uh, what I've given, assignee in, uh, my unique ID. And it's added it to this existing query that we have of created minus 30 days. I have some of my favorite JQL nuggets here. So notice updated minus 1D and issue type is story and story point number equals 5 order by created descending, that says, okay, what's a major story? Major story being story points five, or we could even do greater than five, uh, equal or greater than five. Um, and it has had movement recently, so updated within minus one day. Let's look at this one. I'll put it in our JQL filter here. Now, because I've created several stories with five points within the last day, I suspect this is going to return uh, several items, and sure enough, it is. So search for specimen, notice story points five. Uh, and then we have understand Jetpack Compose, that's a spike, so it's set to five. Uh, create UI screen, also set to five. So this is showing us any five point ticket that have movement within the last day. Uh, as a product owner or as an engineering manager, that helps me keep just a nice concise track of those big stories that I'm likely to be asked about later in the day. Now we also see any item that was updated within the last 14 days. So updated date is greater than or equal to start of day minus 14. So go back 14 days. And updated date is less than end of day. That one's actually not really needed because you wouldn't have anything updated tomorrow, right? So, uh, but nonetheless, I think it's there for documentation sake. And we can create this filter and then we can save it. And by saving this filter, we're able to add to it, which is really cool. We're able to kind of modify it, add to it a little bit and embed it in Confluence, which we'll see in just a moment. But for right now, let's focus on uh, what this filter will do. So I could go back to basic view, and let's see what's our project, uh, My Plant Diary MPD. And we go ahead and search, and switch to JQL. Uh, so notice it, it added project equals MPD here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, truncate off some of the stuff that we don't need, and add in that filter that we saw on the presentation. So project is MPD, updated date is uh, within the last 14 days, but before the end of the day, and uh, search by, or uh, sort by uh, order descending. So this gives me anything that was added to the project within the last 14 days or changed. Uh, what I will do with this is save it, because I'm gonna make a lot of use out of this. So I'm gonna say MPD, MPD updated, last 14 days. So that's just a stub, basically. It's saying, okay, save anything, show me anything that was updated in 14 days. And in a moment, we'll see how we can filter this down by user and actually make 
uh, user-specific queries based on this query. There are two different types of queries in JIRA, basic and advanced. We have an editor, a little YZWIG editor that we can use to create a basic query, but the neat thing is we can leverage that into an advanced query. Uh, it'll give us a starting point, and then we can take that and we can actually look at what's generated in the background. And then we can modify that and make it into a more complex advanced query. So let's see how it works. So per Atlassian, JQL is a text-based language that define how JIRA narrows down a search, and we tend to have a field operator in value. We can get the hang of JQL very easily by choosing uh, filters and then advanced search issue. Note that it gives us a really handy drop-down here where projects, we can filter by project. This becomes important, especially if you have a project with or a product with multiple teams and multiple projects going on at once. You can have different JIRA projects for each of those teams, each of those projects, and you use a query to either look across all projects or look at one project in particular. And then type, we see bug, epic, story, and task. So let's go ahead and select story. And then status, uh, done, in progress, and due. This will make a lot of sense as we run it across our scrum board. And then assignee. So a few tickets to myself, so I can go ahead and choose assign to Brandon Jones and then hit search, and we can see that right now there are uh, three items that are assigned to me, MPD 11, 8, and 4. If I go back to my board, uh, let's go to MPD 5, and let's go ahead and assign this one to me as well. And now back to our niche issue navigator, and I'll go ahead and refresh this, and you see that now uh, I have four items that appear in this query. Uh, now, the nice thing is that I can use this YZWIG editor to start things out, but then I can drop down and do JQL by hand as well. So I start with the YZWIG editor, and then I can choose switch to JQL, and that gives me an interface where I can enter a more specific query. As we work through the story pointing process, we have an opportunity to update those points in our tickets in JIRA. And that's very important because these points are going to drive a series of reports including our velocity chart, our SADU ratio, and several others. So let's make sure that we update these points before we start the sprint. If not, our sprint scope is going to change and our burn down is going to look funny. So it's a good idea to have this all wrapped up and then start our sprint. Now let's see how we can embed a JIRA query into Confluence. This is really handy for queries that you want to access frequently, like our status reports or even release notes, which you could generate automatically from JIRA using JQL. The integration between Confluence and JIRA is quite amazing for productivity because we have JIRA, which effectively is a project management software with metadata that can be queried. And then you have Confluence, which acts like a traditional wiki. So if I want to get to Confluence using the Atlassian Cloud, I simply uh, click the, the kind of the, the tic-tac-toe board up here and then say Confluence. This is my initial setup. Uh, sure, create knowledge base is fine. I suppose I could probably skip through a lot of this, but nonetheless, software development's fine. Okay, won't worry about teammates just yet. I'll go ahead and choose finish. Now, notice I have several spaces I can I can iterate over here in the spaces drop down. Um, I'll go ahead and go to knowledge space. I generally don't like putting things in my own space unless it's really specific to me. Within here, I'm going to choose create, and I'm going to call this page weekly focus publish. You'll notice what this does is it gives me a little link here, and from here I can choose create again, and I can create children pages under that weekly focus page. So the idea is that we're making something to make one-on-ones easier, a place where we'll have a confluence page for each member on our team, and we can insert a JIRA query that shows what that person worked on within the last 14 days. We'll call this one Brandon's weekly focus something like that. Uh, we can put any details here. Uh, generally, I'll put any kind of notes I want to have, maybe about this person's uh, objectives or career or anything like that. But the real magic happens when I click the plus up here and I choose Embedded JIRA. Now, the neat thing is, if you remember, we already made a filter. You see here called MPD Updated Last 14 Days. So I'm just going to grab that title. And we know this filter is just looking at anything that was updated within 14 days. That returns a very broad list of stories. But the neat thing is, even in Confluence, uh, we have an opportunity to narrow that down. 
but to access a filter, a saved filter, from Confluence into JIRA. We just simply say filter equals, and then in double quotes, uh, put the filter name. Now, very important, you have to hit search here, and then you can hit insert, but you have to hit search first. If you don't remember to hit search, it actually won't insert anything. So uh, I can go ahead and choose insert, and let's just make sure this works as we want. You see, it gives us kind of a nice uh, preview of what's going on, and, and right now, it's going to show every single ticket that exists. But remember, I want to filter this down uh, to only tickets for this user, which happens to be me. So I'm going to go back uh, into edit mode, and I'm going to say assignee in. And then here you can either put, if you happen to have uh, the person's name, like Brandon Jones, as, as that person is known to JIRA, you can put that in here. Um, I found that, okay, it doesn't know who I am, so what I need to do is go back to that um, kind of number it assigned to me as a unique user ID. Uh, for that, I'm just going to do a quick and dirty here. There are several ways to find it. If you have a Confluence page, you can usually find it up in the URL. Uh, but I'm going to simply go to Basic View and say Assignee Brandon Jones, and then switch to JQL, and you notice that it has here this unique ID that was generated for me as unique identifier within Atlassian. So I'll go back and say assignee in, and then we'll use that unique ID, and then say and, because we're appending this to our filter that we created previously. I expect about five issues to come up as I search. And sure enough, those are the five. So what I can do now is I could create one of these pages for everybody on the team in Confluence, copy and paste this exact same JQL I'm using here, but then just swap out that assignee with whoever happens to be uh, related to that page. So Brandon's page, Srini's page, Sarah's page, so on and so forth. Uh, each one will simply have the same query with a different user ID here. And I choose insert. And now you see that gives me a nice, concise view of only the tickets that I've worked on within the last 14 days. Now, of course, there are other ways that we can tweak this as well. We could filter by uh, status, so to do and progress done. We could filter by story points or complexity. So there's a lot of ways we can take this big data set and we can minimize it. But I'll tell you this, for the query I've just shown you, I found this to be very invaluable in my role as an engineering manager uh, because I tend to have one-on-ones with my direct reports every other week. and uh, I set this page up for each of them so that the day before the one-on-one, -on -one, I can go through and just read through the work they've done. And it might spawn a question that I want to ask them or maybe a follow-up. And provided that I remember, which I try to do, that I remember to go through the weekly focus the night before, a lot of times I can answer my own questions there. So if I think it needs a follow-up, I might go reach out to somebody and say, hey, can you tell me about this? And then by the time I meet with my teammate, I'll say, hey, I noticed this on your ticket. I noticed it's flagged as a blocker or it's blocked by something. I followed up with this team. I found out that they're going to release it Tuesday. Does that give you what you need to unblock it? And that makes our one-on-ones very effective. So this is one of the better uses I've found for embedded Jira queries. But you could also do things like release notes. Uh, you could do dashboard pages. A lot of things to really take a complex operation and make it very simple. So as always, I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.